In today's Lightroom video, I'm going to show you how you can take a relatively boring and flat draw file like this one right here, and how you can add color and punch and interest to get a picture like this at the end. I'm going to start off here by bringing up the whites by quite a bit, and that just brings up the entire interest and the entire brightness of the picture, but at the same time I am going to go into the minus with the highlights, just to kind of keep these very bright spots in control. Then I'm going to bring up the shadows also by 100, just so we have a lot of shadow details everywhere, and I do that so I can actually bring the contrast to the right, and really give some punch to the entire picture. I don't want to go too far here, but about 35 should work pretty well, and I might even bring up the blacks even more, additionally to the shadows, just so there's even more shadow detail, and I really like that look. So then clarity, you really have to be careful, especially with scenes where there is so much texture, so I might even go a little bit into the minus overall clarity and then adjust some local clarity later on. But before I do that, let's go to the vibrance and saturation. Just gonna bring up those vibrance a little bit and maybe even a bit the saturation. Alright, and the next and last thing in the basic adjustments would be the color temperature. I actually think I'm gonna go a bit more into the blues here and maybe go a bit more into the magenta with the tint. And the reason why I go into the blues here, even though I do want this picture to be very warm, is so I can go down here into the split toning, go to the highlights and just click on this little box right here. And by changing around the slider on this color palette here within the highlights, it will only increase the color within the highlight parts of the picture. So it will create a lot of differentiation, but also make the entire picture just look a little bit more natural, because naturally speaking, the colors come from the lights, of course. So I'm going to close the highlights here and also go into the shadows. This does the exact same thing, just for the shadow parts. And I just want to make this a little bit cooler to get some additional differentiation. So here's before the split toning, here's after. It might not seem like a huge difference, but if we zoom in a little bit, you can definitely see that the overall lights and just the mood of the picture definitely changed. And if that's still not enough, you can of course also increase that. So going back up into the tonal curve, I do think I want to bring down the highlights here a little bit and also bring up the overall lights. The lights will just kind of do a similar thing to the whites, but not quite as severe. And then I'm also gonna play around with the rest of these sliders, maybe just a little bit into the plus darks and also a bit into the plus shadows. So HSL tool, don't really think I wanna fine tune everything here, so I'm just gonna leave that out. Going to the detail though, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpness around 50 and I also want to bring down the masking slider while holding down the alt key. So I want to make sure that I only select the parts that I actually want to be sharpened. Something like 70 should work pretty well here. And while I'm at it, might as well also bring the color noise reduction to the right to get rid of all of the purple and green sensor noise. So going down, lens corrections, just gonna remove the chromatic duration and also enable my profile corrections and choose my Canon 18-55 kit lens here. That'll just get rid of the distortion as well as the vignetting from before to after. And with that being said, I think I'm pretty much done with the global adjustments here. There are certainly a lot of other adjustments that you could fine tune and use and so on but it pretty much looks as I want in terms of the global adjustments. So again, a little glimpse from before to after. So going into the local adjustments, there's definitely a lot that I want to do here. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab a graduated filter, go into the minus exposure and just drag a filter over the bottom right here. So I really want to create a little bit of differentiation from this car to the foreground especially. And then I'm going to grab another minus exposure filter, this time for the very background over these trees right here. And definitely the sky is still very bright, which I like, but it just was a little bit over the top from before. So let me grab another one also with minus exposure, just to kind of fine tune that from another angle. 
and maybe make that one right here even darker. Let's even get another one also with minus exposure just for the bottom right right here and also decrease the exposure there a little bit. So let's just take another second to compare from before any of these filters and I mean you can absolutely see the difference from before it's just so much more even so much more boring compared to afterwards where there's a sense of mystery and really a complexification in terms of the lighting. So speaking of complexification that is really what you want to use the local adjustments for. So I'm just going to grab an adjustment brush here also go into the minus exposure and just add some additional vignetting over just some corners because I do want to make some of these parts even darker to create some additional interest and to also get more attention towards the center of the picture. So I think that's pretty much it though, don't want to go too far with it, maybe another little bit right here and on the top right there as well. So with that being said, once again from before the adjustment brush to after and now I'm gonna go into the rail filters for the dodge and burning. And dodge and burning is making individual parts either darker or brighter which increases the complexity of the whole picture and the whole lighting scheme like crazy. So what I'm gonna do here first, make sure the feather is at 100, also that you invert the mask. And then I'm gonna start off with plus exposure by bringing up the whites here. Also bringing up the exposure slider just slightly. Maybe increasing the contrast a bit, bringing up the shadows as well. And at the same time adding a little bit of warmth in the color right here. So now as I drag a filter over the picture I'm just gonna use it as a reference and further adjust all of these sliders and you really want to make sure that you do that because you don't want to just go over the top you know you don't want to have something like that. You really just want to add exposure in a natural and still organic looking way. So what I'm gonna do here is just start off with one filter, go over an area that is maybe a little bit dull and boring and just increase the exposure there. And once I've done that, I'm gonna right click, duplicate and drag it to another area and just gonna repeat that. Now you definitely have to adjust these filters from position to position because of course every area needs either a little bit more or either a little bit less exposure. So definitely be sure to not just drag these around but also resize them, re-angle them and also move around all of these sliders so it does look natural at the end. And what is great about these rail filters is that you can just go back to them at any point and fine tune all of the settings again without having any impact on any of the other filters. So that's why I use the rail filters for dodge and burning. But anyways, take a second to just look at this area right here that I'm circling with my mouse and you will be able to see that there are shadows, there are medium shadows, there are kind of bright parts towards the right. So there's a real graduation which I really love. But it's still a little bit boring within the part. So by just adding a filter right here and not going too far, as you can see from before that one, to after it just looks a little bit more interesting a little bit more illuminated and it's really all about complexification about additional interest and always keep in mind that you still want to keep it looking natural don't go too far once again but also make sure that you don't go too little into the adjustments because then you won't see anything. So right clicking and duplicating maybe just a little bit more right here, a very small filter in fact and once again fine adjusting all of these sliders. So I think that actually works pretty well, maybe I have to adjust the size of this one right here and I think that's actually pretty much all I'm gonna do in terms of the plus exposure. And another thing that I really want to do here because we have this car in the middle with these very bright headlights I want to exaggerate that. So what I'm gonna do for that is once again grab another plus exposure filter but this time a very big one. And I'm just kind of gonna angle it like that so it seems like the lighting from the car just spills on the foreground a little bit because as you can see it does spill on the road a little bit 
just not nearly as much as I wanted to make it look. So I think that does pretty much the job, maybe just fine tuning it. And in terms of the plus exposure, this is from before any plus exposure filters and here's after. I mean, a huge difference and I might just have to make this one a little bit smaller. So once again, great about these rail filters, you can adjust them at any time. And with the plus exposure filters being done, I do have to add some minus exposure filters as well. So for that, I'm gonna grab another filter, reset everything, and this time go into the minus exposure, a little bit into the minus blacks. You could even go a bit into the minus shadows. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just go towards the dark parts and make them a little bit darker. Maybe I do have to add a bit more contrast here. And the idea, of course, for the bright parts or the bright filters is just making some of the neutral and already bright parts even brighter, just increasing the interest, increasing the dynamic of the picture. And you want to do the exact same thing with the dark parts, just going over the already dark areas and just adding a little bit more differentiation and just exaggerating the actual look while still keeping it looking natural. And there is actually another trick to it, that is you don't want to have too many bright spots in an area, so you do want to have a little bit of dark in between, otherwise it will look quite boring. So for example, if you look at this area right here, it's just kind of very evenly bright. So I'm just gonna grab a minus exposure filter here, make it a bit smaller and really go quite far into the minus blacks and minus exposure. So there is a little bit of differentiation and that just creates the interest, that creates the dynamics. So don't be afraid to go into the minus exposure with some of these areas. It is just a necessity additionally to the just plus exposure filters. So once again, as you can see, these um, sliders right here don't work at all as much as I've done beforehand here. So just gonna fine adjust everything, going over there, making that one a little bit darker. And maybe, you know, just this part right here, kind of making a bigger filter, going not quite as far into the minus blacks and right click duplicate going over here and just making this area a little bit darker. I mean, it's quite time consuming. It takes five to 10 minutes to really get some good dodge and burning in your picture, but it is absolutely worth it as I'm gonna show you in a second once I'm done. But you know, just making this part a little bit darker, this part isn't very important either. So just make it a little bit darker and maybe even over this very large area here towards the left, just making that one a bit darker as well. And let me just think for a second and just look at the picture if there is anything else I wanna do to it. Maybe another one with minus exposure, this time a relatively small one over this area right here, just to get some differentiation from here to here to here. I mean, dodge and burning can be a little bit confusing and difficult at first, but if you get the hang of it, it is definitely greatly valuable and absolutely amazing what you find out to be able to do. If you want to learn more about dodge and burning, I've made a completely separate like 40 minute video, so be sure to check the link in the description for that if you're interested. So I think I'm pretty much done in terms of the dodge and burning. Let's see how the dodge and burning looks from before any and afterwards. Definitely a huge difference and maybe it seems a little bit over the top if you see the direct comparison from before to after. But if you go away a little bit and then come back and look at the picture, you will really notice that everything starts to look natural and it's really just the difference from before to after that looks kind of over the top. So with that being said, I think I'm done with pretty much most of my adjustments. Maybe I'm just gonna real quick go into the overall exposure and just decrease that a little bit because I do wanna get some of that dark and you know mysterious mood back into the picture. 
And also, even though I do like the dark mood, I want to make sure that the very dark shadows are still a little bit visible, so I'm going to increase the shadow slider within the tonal curve. So with that being said, I really think that I'm done with the entire picture. And, you know, once again, there are a lot of other fine adjustments that you could do, but as an overall picture, I'm really happy with the result. So let's just check real quick from the raw file right here and from before. I mean, this looks like a completely different picture. It's so much more flat, so much more gray. And also the lighting just doesn't seem nearly as interesting. So this is the afterwards. I know it's quite severely edited, but always keep in mind that you can go half as much as I've done with some of these adjustments or just a quarter as much. I'm just kind of showing you what is possible and how you can turn a very flat picture and turn it into a very vibrant and very contrasty and very punchy one. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that real quick at the end of the video. And by the way, if you have a quick second to either like or dislike the video, that would be hugely appreciated because that allows me to see which kinds of videos you guys enjoy and which you don't. So that definitely helps me to improve my future videos. But in any case, once again, thank you very much for watching and keep on editing great pictures.